Hi there, Steve Kaufman here, and today the Olympics are on in Rio. I'm going to talk about learning Portuguese. Remember, if you like my channel, please subscribe. And if you have any questions or things you would like me to talk about, please let me know. Um, I thought I would talk a bit about Portuguese because we're, some of us, many of us, are watching the uh, uh, Olympics in Brazil, and despite all of the you know, bad reports that we always get in the lead up to any Olympic Games, whether it be Vancouver, which some British newspaper called the worst Olympics in the world ever, and then all the problems about toilets in Sochi and uh, pollution in Rio and stuff. But it looks like actually things are going on, are, are proceeding swimmingly, so to speak. So people say, well, if I go to Brazil, can I communicate what language they speak? Well, first of all, many of you know this, but some may not know that Brazil speaks Portuguese. There's no Brazilian language, there's Portuguese. And Portuguese, uh, now, if you wanna go there and just have enough of the language to say hello and be friendly with people, then all you need to do is buy a phrase book, try to memorize three or four or five expressions, and that's all you'll be able to do. I had the experience I went to Vietnam after six, seven days, all I could ever say was thank you, please, and goodbye. That's about it. We just can't absorb this, at least my brain can't absorb it all that quickly. However, if you want to really get into the language, which I heartily recommend, there's 200 million people in Brazil, uh, a great place to visit, I suppose. I've never been there. There's Portugal, which I know is a lovely place to visit. It's an important language in the world. and it's very similar to Spanish. So if you already know Spanish, then Portuguese is easier for you insofar as the vocabulary is concerned. If you learn Portuguese, you can then learn Spanish and French and Italian, other Romance languages. I would recommend that you get yourself this little book. Uh, grammar books are the smaller the better, the simpler the better. The more examples of how the language is used, and if you get them without any drills, any exercise, those are the best kinds of books to get. And it's a resource that you go back to again and again and again, because you can't absorb all the grammar rules and all the endings the first time, not even the second time. And so you go back and you go back and you go back. And every time you go back, you pick up a little more. So I could give you a lot of details about the Portuguese language and you won't remember a thing, all right? Let me just say in general terms, there are a number of things that Portuguese does differently from Spanish. For example, if you're familiar with Romance languages, typically the, you know, I have gone, the auxiliary verb to indicate the past tense is avoir in French, haber in Spanish, but in Portuguese they use tener, or the equivalent in Portuguese. So that becomes the auxiliary verb, you have to get used to that. There's some funny things they do, for example, uh, to think is not pensar, penser, it's achar, which is a find, achar, that's what they use. Uh, and uh, then they have very handy words like ficar is to, uh, you know, to be, to get. It's got a lot of different meanings that you have to get used to um, in context. So there's lots of things to discover in Portuguese that make it a very interesting language. They have strange, not strange, but interesting uses of the infinitive that we don't find in other languages. They have a personal infinitive, and then they have this future subjunctive that kind of looks like the infinitive. And so all of these things are there. They're explained in great detail, for example, in this book. But you should have a few go-to uh, uh, sites for any language you're learning. So if you were to Google Portuguese grammar, you could find tons of free uh, resources giving you chapter and verse on Portuguese grammar. However, you can't learn the grammar from the get-go. You can't learn the basics. Therefore, I would still recommend that you expose yourself to the language. So that might be through a beginner book, a teach yourself or one of those. You can also go to link our site where we have a lot of beginner material for Portuguese. And then that raises the question, do we learn the Portuguese from Portugal or do we learn the Portuguese from Brazil? All right. My own experience and my opinion is in a way, when you start out, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Even though the pronunciation is quite different and probably the pronunciation 
in Brazil is easier because they pronounce all of the vowels, all of the syllables, which the Portuguese from Portugal don't. They sometimes kind of cut them down, chew them. They don't kind of pronounce them, you know. So there are some difficulties there. There are some issues in terms of how the R is pronounced. And you'll discover, in fact, that the R is sometimes a rolled R and sometimes a guttural R. And it varies all over the map depending on where you are. But all of these things are difficult to notice at first. You shouldn't be trying to notice too many things. You just want to get some words. Uh, and, and I'm always, when I start out, I'm motivated to learn, to work my way through whatever content I'm listening to and reading. And in my own experience, moving from Spanish to Portuguese, as long as I was trying to use, like I had living language before we had link at, at uh, or excuse me, before we had Portuguese at link, um, I was uh, using living language and I, and I thought, well, it's just easy. I'll just convert my Spanish to Portuguese. It's not that easy because you have to change your habits. You have to change if you're a Spanish speaker, whether a native speaker or speaking Spanish as a second language, as is my case, you have to change these habits. And we're kind of reluctant to let go uh, of the comfort of, of Spanish. And so to try and just pick up a few phrases like, oh, they say this in Portuguese instead of this uh, is not going to do it in my experience anyway. So I wasted a lot of time trying to just pick up, you know, the few ways in which it changes. And then I went to Portugal and hoped that I'd be able to speak and I wasn't able to speak at all. Even though I'd spent weeks or months doing a lot of listening to Portuguese phrases through the living language course and stuff. And I can still remember where I was when I was jogging and listening to all this stuff. And in the end, it didn't work for me. What worked when was when at link we had, I still remember Ana Paula from Belo Horizonte in Brazil. She created a lot of content about taking her kids to the zoo and stuff like that. Interesting content. And we got Cafe do Brasil and a lot of good content like that. And then I found some wonderful podcasts from Portugal. So I was mixing them both. Mostly I was interested in, in tuning myself to structurally how they structure the language, how they express things, what are the words. And, you know, it's different. They use the, the to the singular form in Portugal. In Brazil, they only use the você, which is the third person for you. There's a lot of stuff like that. You'll eventually get used to it. I think a person should do a lot of listening and reading in both in the written form. It doesn't matter if you pick up a book written by Paulo Coelho. Uh, it's not obvious necessarily. I mean, it is in terms of the, any dialogue in there, whether it's Portugal or Brazil, go for both. And then at some point decide which accent you want to focus on. But a lot of fun with Portuguese. I was helped with my Spanish, although in an initial period, it kind of held me back. Um, but, uh, go for it. If you are already a speaker of a Romance language or, and add this other one to your, you know, another, uh, you know, arrow in your quiver, or if you're starting from scratch and you want to go to Brazil or Portugal, do the Portuguese, it'll open the door to other Romance languages. So a language that's well worth studying. The main thing in, in you know, tips on learning a language is first of all, to get people motivated, get them in the door. And then every person has to discover the language on their own and just stay with it until you get to whatever you want to achieve. And, and I think fluency, and I'm going to be stressing this more and more. If you know the common European framework, B2 fluency is achievable. And that's the way we've structured link. And I think more and more, we're going to have the slogan, all the way to fluency. So if you want to get to fluency, go for it. Portuguese for an English speaker is a relatively easy language to learn. And for a speaker of other Romance languages, extremely easy, but not a slam dunk, not a slam dunk. You got to work at it. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.